<clears throat> Looking back, I can still remember our drives through the mysterious English countryside. I was probably maybe six years old, and at the time my dad was studying theology, I think, at the, the Cambridge of... Uh, the Cambridge of the University of Oxford, or maybe uh, Cambridge, I don't really remember. But um, we would go sometimes for these uh, short road trips, maybe an hour or two. Of course, at the time, an hour or two seemed like such a long time in the car. And so in order to uh, still my ever-wandering mind, my dad started to make up these stories right there on the fly. There are stories about uh, the Bloomkins, a family surprisingly very similar to my own. Okay. I don't really remember the stories of the Bloomkins anymore, but I really remember the way that the countryside would start to take on this almost uh, mythical look and feel to it. Behind hills, I, I started to imagine ogres. Uh, in little valleys, I would picture the dragons that were climbing around. And, uh, in, in dark places, I would picture the witches that were creeping around, <laughs> causing no good. And, of course, in my, I guess, uh, naivety as a six-year-old boy, I thought, oh man, okay, uh, it would be like, super easy for me to fight and, and vanquish and kill them, uh, because, you know, I was young, I was, I was six, I had the whole world ahead of me, and, uh, Whoops. <laughs> Trying to get my earbuds in, huh? Okay. Okay. So then a couple years go by, and we moved back to Canada. And uh, one day we were visiting uh, some friends of ours, and while there, the grown ups decided, okay, it's you know time to have some serious talk now, so let's just uh, get the kids to watch a movie. And so they put on this old VHS of. The Princess Bride. Does it have any sports in it? Are you kidding? Fencing, fighting, torture, revenge, giants, monsters, chases, escapes, true love, miracles. In the movie, there's this sick boy, uh, and his grandpa, uh, he says, Hey, <coughs> listen up, poke. <laughs> I don't know. That's not a very accurate accent. All right. The Prince's Bride. His grandpa reads him this old story. By S. Morgenstern, chapter one. About a young woman named Buttercup, uh, who loves this poor farmhand named Wesley. His name was Wesley. Farm boy, fill these with water. Please. As you wish. That day, she was amazed to discover that when he was saying, as you wish, what he meant was, I love you. And she goes off, actually, no, sorry, he goes off to find fame and fortune. Uh, but his ship is attacked by the dread pirate Roberts, who leaves no survivors. Wesley was murdered. Murdered by pirates is good. <laughs> and uh, years later, <laughs> Buttercup is uh, engaged to marry the Prince of Florence. Uh, who's this guy she's totally not into? If you tell me I must marry you in ten days, please believe I will be dead by morning. As, and so anyway, this huge drama starts to unfold and just before the wedding she's kidnapped by these three rugged misfits and as they're taking her off to a foreign country to basically kill her and, and blame that other country to start a war, uh, this man in black appears and hunts them down. And, I mean, <laughs> who even is this guy? Uh, he has to fight each of her captors one at a time, and uh, Buttercup's kind of going, oh, I don't know. I mean, if these, if these guys kill me, that sucks. But if this man in black captures me, I don't know what's going to happen there. So she's kind of torn between these two, uh, kind of questioning what's the lesser of the two evils, you know? I never said he was my dearest love. Oh man, 
To be honest, it was one of the most intense films I'd ever seen before. And I kept thinking that my parents would come in halfway through and be like, Hey! Hey, this movie's not for kids! And... <laughs> it's, it's not on my parents' talk, but... That they, <laughs> they would come in and, and turn the movie off halfway through because... Uh, this was way too mature, you know? Uh, but they didn't, and I remember being struck with that same feeling I'd had as we went uh, on our road trips through the English landscape. The same sense of adventure and wonder and uh, just this excitement for the possibilities in the world. And these two stories, the story of the Princess Bride and the story of the Bloomkin families, kind of became uh, irrevocably connected to me in my brain. And as many times as we went back to their house and watched that VHS uh, again and again, uh, each time I still expected uh, something new to pop out. Each time I expected that a dragon would be there, or uh, a knight in armor to arrive, or uh, a terrible witch to go flying around. <sighs> and some water. Not some water, some, uh, some fresh air. <sighs> okay, back in. So anyway, a decade went by. And uh, a short time, well, not a short time, obviously, this was, I just said <laughs> over a decade went by. So <laughs> a decade and <laughs> a decade and some more time goes by. And I was on this uh, trip with some friends of mine, and we decided to have a movie night. And now one of my friends had uh, a little USB that we could plug into the TV in our hotel room, and they happened to have the Princess Bride. But then something strange happened. It uh, it wasn't really the movie that I remembered it being. Not too bad. I'll try and stay awake. Oh, well, thank you very much. Very nicely. Your vote of confidence is overwhelming. All right. My friends didn't realize just how scary this movie was, or uh, heart pumping. Is that an expression? And said they saw it as a comedy. No more rhymes now, I mean it! Anybody want to feel it? Yeah! I started to see just how many jokes were in there and, and just how kind of tongue-in-cheek the whole thing was. It's my father's failing health that's upsetting her. Of course. And, uh... My friends kept cracking up at the things going on. They said, oh, this is cheesy. And uh, as soon as the man in black appears, like, oh, we know who this is. The, the guy that we see coming from miles away. As a kid, I was so blown away when I finally saw the twist of who he actually was. And I remember watching the movie again and seeing, okay, were there any clues? Was there any way to know it was coming? And I'd be like, no, of course, of course you can't tell. But my friends just right away on the moment said, oh, it's Mr. Hurtfurtfur. Her. <laughs> they knew without any questions, without any doubts. But it's like, man, how did you guys figure this out so quickly? You know, this is like the best kept secret of, uh, when did this come out? 1987? Uh, this was such an important film to me as a kid. This was something that was connected to this mythological feeling I'd had in England. And this was something that, uh, to me, was like the most adventurous movie you could watch. And I just remember being super disappointed. I will never love again. And this time also I noticed something new. This time I didn't just notice how The Princess Bride was a story, but I really noticed how the story itself was told. And I saw how this grandpa is really just As they reach for uh, trying to connect with his grandson and... What? What? No, it's kissing again. You don't want to hear that. Mm. I don't mind so much. Okay. Uh, he wasn't just telling a story to interest the boy. He wasn't just trying to keep his mind entertained. He was communicating with his grandson in a way that would really engage him and in a way that would really fill him with uh, courage and excitement. And so I realized that the stories my dad would tell of the Bloomkin families weren't about the story itself. It wasn't about the words he said, but more how he said it. Uh, and that's really what I want to leave you with. You can tell 
amazing stories with amazing words, but also something to keep in mind is not just what you say, but really how you say it. And who knows, maybe one day they'll look back and really see how much it impacted their lives. They'll be filled with wonder and a sense of adventure. They'll be filled with courage because of the way that you told them a story. Grandpa? Maybe you could come over and read it again to me tomorrow. As you wish. And that's how you get stories like grapes. <laughs>